Welcome to our World of Fiery videos, covering topics of everyday importance to print providers. Today we will cover key steps for successful color management. Let's look at some challenges or some points where color management can fail or appear to fail. So you've done all your homework. You've attended all of our World of Fiery webinars. You've read all the books and publications and subscribed to all the mailing lists. Color management in your shop should be configured as well as it is in any other print shop in the world. For some reason, you're still having challenges matching color, or you're having to do reprints or rework because customers are dissatisfied with color either on the first run of the job or commonly on a reprint of a job that they expect is going to match the original run. The first problem is related to calibration. Calibration is essential on the DFE. If I don't calibrate the device, I have a situation where my colors aren't landing in a consistent place from day to day. We see this in the lower left corner of the slide. If I calibrate the fiery using a spectrophotometer, typically the ES1000 or ES2000, I now get into a calibrated space where my colors are landing close to the same place. So they are very consistent. And if I calibrate the fiery on a daily basis or every shift, as many shops do, I'm going to have consistent output over time when I go back to do reprints. Calibration by itself is not enough. I also need an ICC profile so that the colors are colorimetrically accurate and matching the source that I'm trying to match, such as grackle or swap. If I create the ICC profile without calibration, you'll see that my colors get closer to the bullseye in the lower right corner of the slide, but they're not in the middle. The best place that I want to be is with a custom ICC profile for my output device and a calibrated state of the DFE so that I get consistent and accurate colors. Remember, for the percentage of you that are not yet using custom profiles for each paper type in each print setting, you're going to get a lot better color appearance and a lot more reproducible appearance over time for reprints if you go and make profiles for the individual paper types. If you have a fiery DFE, the tool you can use for this is Color Profiler Suite. The Color Profiler Suite Express module lets me make a custom calibration and a profile for a paper type in five steps. At the end of that, it links these together into a preset. I can use that preset whenever I print on that paper to get the right calibration and profiling. The next area of failure for color management is related to the settings on the digital front end. And there's a few different kinds of settings we can look at here on the firing. The first one is the imaging settings. So if I go to a job in command workstation, and I go to the Image tab, you can see the image settings for your digital print system. And these are going to look different on every different kind of fire you might have based on the manufacturer of your press, the capabilities that we have on that press. But the key things to focus on in the image settings is the resolution and the halftone screen that you're printing with. If you change the resolution or change the halftone screen, you're probably going to get different tonality. This means that if you calibrate with one resolution and halftone or profile with one resolution and halftone and then change this later for different jobs, that calibration and profile are not going to work in the way they intended. So again, one of the benefits of using Color Profiler Suite and getting this preset created for a custom profile and calibration set is that it also locks in these imaging settings into that preset so that you can't make a mistake. The second challenge is to configure the source profiles. Probably we want to match these to the working spaces of our customers. The third area of challenge is the output profile selection. So if you look on the Fiery DFE, depending on the configuration, you may be selecting the output profile manually or automatically. If I specifically pick in job profiles, an output profile, like the fiery demo profile that we showed you earlier on the flowchart. 
then you're going to use that profile just for this job. This is absolutely the worst way to configure your DFE. If you're manually picking a profile for each job, each time you print, there's a high probability that you or one operator in the shop is going to pick the wrong profile one day, or that you're going to pick different output profiles on the first shift compared with on the second shift. So the best practice on the Fiery is to use the setting called Use Media Defined Profile when you go to the job properties or the Fiery default color configuration. If I use Media Defined Profiles, then I need a little help understanding how does the profile get selected. First, if the Use Media Defined Profile setting is selected, we check to see if the Fiery Paper Catalog is being used by the job. The Paper Catalog is specified here on the Media tab of the Job Properties. If I use a Paper Catalog entry, we'll try to pick the profile from the Paper Catalog. So the next question is, is there a profile defined in the Paper Catalog? A Paper Catalog entry looks like this. And in this example, you can see that I've selected the profile plane number one for the front and back of my sheet. So in this example, the output profile will be selected based on the paper catalog entry and the profiles that are assigned in that entry here. Some fireys don't offer a paper catalog, or for whatever reason, you might not be using the paper catalog. If paper catalog is not used in the job, then we look to see if there's a profile assigned to the paper or media type. That's configured here in the Device Center of Command Workstation under the Output Profiles. You can see in this example that the plain media type is assigned to use the Fiery Demo Plane Profile. So if in Job Properties, when I configure to print the job on the Media tab, I choose the plain paper type, since I'm not using a paper catalog entry, in this case, the profile will be selected based on the media assignment. So we'll get the output profile assigned to the paper type. Notice that if I use the paper catalog and I haven't done any associations in the paper catalog, this is also how the profile selection is made. Okay? Before we go on, you're seeing the two very best practices for automated profile selection. I want to also remind you that when we create profiles for a Fiery with Color Profiler Suite, if you use the paper catalog in the course of creating the profile, we actually populate that entry for you. We put the custom profile that you've made in place for the front and back profiles on the paper catalog entry. Other situations. If there is not a profile assigned to the paper type in the device center, then we're going to use the default color settings profile for the Fiery, which is the one that's set in the device center. We're getting into an area of uncertainty here because that's probably not the right profile for the different paper types you're printing on. Lastly, if I choose to specifically pick the output profile for the job, I'm going to get the profile I selected. Seems like a very easy choice, but again, this one has high risk because of the fact that different people pick different profiles at different times, and also because of the fact that I might want to go back and do a reprint of this job in a week or a month or six months, and it's very unlikely that I'm going to remember what output profile I selected for the job. The last problem we encounter with color management, or probably the most common failure I see once you have all your best practices down, is problems with lighting and what we call metamerism. Metamerism has to do with colors that look the same in one light source and not another. This gets into the area of how we measure our colors, whether we use the M0, M1, or M2 measurement mode of our spectrophotometer, which we've talked about in some other sessions. In order to understand metamerism and the way two colors could look the same in one source but not another, it's interesting for us to examine some spectral data. So these graphs represent what we call spectral power distributions. We've talked about in earlier webinars. The spectral power distribution shows me how much energy a color has at each wavelength. This is the raw measurement data that we get from a spectrophotometer before we convert the spectra into LAB or XYZ or some other device-independent color space for purposes of color management and making profiles. We have this raw information 
that shows me an invariant description of the color. It shows me how much energy each of these colors has at each different wavelength. So if I look at the spectral power distribution of the two colors shown in red and blue on the slide, you can see that spectrally, they're very different colors. They're not what we would call an invariant match, where the plots of the spectral power distribution would be identical. Now let's consider an example where I put these two samples in a light booth. And in my light booth, the peaks of my red and green and blue lamps, or energy, in the white lights in the light booth happen to be at these positions. The peaks of these lamps are pointing at cases where the spectral power distributions intersect. In this lighting, these colors will appear to match because they have exactly the same amount of energy where I have the peaks in my, my white lights in the light booth. Now we take the proof outside the light booth. Maybe we look at it in an incandescent light or much more typically in a fluorescent light like you probably have in your customer service area or in your press room. If I move the RGB source, that is the color temperature of the source, I essentially move where the RGB peaks are in that light source. In this example, the RGB peaks now highlight the difference between the spectral power distributions of these colors, and these two colors now no longer appear to match. Okay. The simple lesson is that color management only works in D50 lighting. That's how we make all our profiles, is to use them in D50. If we're doing special applications, we want the colors to match in fluorescent light or incandescent or tungsten or some other special lighting condition, we can use settings in a tool like Color Profiler Suite to make profiles that work in different lighting conditions, but by definition, standard profiles are going to only work in D50 light. So the short form of this lesson is to tell you that we are basically in the business of metamerism in the printing industry. We're in the business of making colors match in a certain light source, namely the light booth, where our customer signs off on them, and we then show them the final result. Remember, for lighting, the best practices are to use a D50 light booth it complies with the latest ISO 3664-2009 specification. Also, we probably want to profile and verify using M1 measurements that match those 3664-2009 compliant lamps. If you look at the end caps of your lamps and talk to your lighting booth manufacturer, you can confirm you're using compliant lamps with this ISO standard. If you're buying D50 bulbs at Costco, putting them in your press room or in your customer service area, you're probably close to D50, but it's very unlikely that you're going to be in compliance with this ISO specification. So one of the big takeaways from today, I know light booths are expensive and you have to find a place to put it and probably run some electrical outlet so you can plug it in and use it after you've bought the light booth, but it's really critical to doing proper color matching and showing your customer both an initial sample and a final result that match and reprints that match is to take them into that light booth to look at those samples to prove that you're compliant. Thank you for watching. For additional resources and e-learning classes on this topic, visit our website. To see all recorded sessions and register for upcoming World of Fiery webinars, please visit efi.com forward slash WOF webinars.